Last summer, the Arctic melted. Okay? We suddenly saw a huge, rapid, uncontrolled melt of the Arctic that by the time it was done this time last year had broken the old record for minimum sea ice extent by 25%. And we've just matched it this year. This week, for the first time ever, both the Northwest and Northeast, first time in 125,000 years, the first time in Homo sapien history, okay, both the Northwest and Northeast passages are open and the Arctic is an island surrounded on all sides by water, okay? Suddenly we're seeing, and in the last 18 months, seeing in a way we hadn't understood before just how fast these changes are happening and just how deadly they're going to be. Sea level rise as of as much as seven feet in the course of this century. Did you see those pictures from Hurricane Gustav by the time it came to New Orleans, a Category 1 hurricane that missed the city by a long ways, and yet the water was within inches of the top of those levees? Add seven feet to that and try to figure out what the coastlines of the world look like. This is the first civilization scale challenge that we have ever faced, and it couldn't be grimmer. The scientists, panicked in a sense as they are, have finally given us a number, a red line, a target, a place which we can't go past. Our foremost climatologist in this country is a NASA scientist named Jim Hansen, a very brave and good man who stood up to a number of attempts by the Bush administration to gag the phone. And he said last December at the American Geophysical Union and in a paper published in January, he finally gave us a number. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do much math or science today, but these are the only set of numbers you need to remember, okay? Before the Industrial Revolution, the atmospheric concentration of CO2 was 275 parts per million. That's what it had been all of human history. That's the genesis number, if you want. When we started burning coal and gas and oil, it started going up, and 20 years ago we began to understand that this was going to be devastating and scary. But we didn't know where the red line was, what the number would be. We used it. What we learned this year from Jim Hansen was that the safe number, and this is the most important number in the world, is 350 parts per million. 350, okay? It is an extremely tough number because we're already past it. We're at 387 parts per million now, and that makes sense. We're past it and the Arctic is melting. We're past it and the methane is flowing into the atmosphere. We're past it and the sea level is starting to rise. We have got right away, right away, to put the brakes on. This is not a problem for your children or your grandchildren. It is the problem of our time. And if we don't get a handle on it in the next few years, if we don't put in place dramatic plans, not only to stop new coal-fired power plants, but to shut down most of the ones that are already operating, if we do not figure out how to leave that carbon in the ground, then we have no chance. And the hard part is that we can't do it just here, we have to do it around the world. But we also have to be doing work globally. The world's leaders come together in Copenhagen in December of 2009 to agree on a successor to the Kyoto Treaty, the treaty that we've never signed because of George W. Bush. If we don't get that treaty right, if it isn't radical and tough and make real demands, then there is no more time. It's our last bite at the apple. We will pass the point where we're materially able to affect the outcome of this saga, and we'll just spend the next century dealing with all the effects, all the flooding, all the drought, all the other things that are going to plague our lives. Uh, we've joined together now to launch a global movement, and that global movement is called 350.org, 350.org. And basically what we're doing is spending the next 14 months before that Copenhagen Treaty just getting that number out into the world so that everywhere around the world, if people know nothing else about climate, they know that that number represents some kind of safety. And because it's a radical number, because of its implications for our energy future, that's a very political act. We need before these Copenhagen meetings to have as much of the world as possible understand 
that that's the bar for success or failure. And if we can spread that idea, that phrase, that number all over the world, then we will at least move those negotiations somewhat in the direction of the science. Move us back somewhere in the direction that the planet needs for us to go. Now, it is not easy, it turns out, to do a kind of worldwide campaign like this. In Utah, we had 350 people on bicycles circling the state house uh, uh, hour after hour to make the point. Uh, uh, around the world now, church after church has begun to ring its bells 350 times. Now, that sounds entirely symbolic, but it turns out that there is not a TV or radio reporter in the world who can resist going and doing a story if the church bell suddenly starts ringing for half an hour in the middle of the week unexpectedly. <laughs> Someone just did a demonstration where they got, 300 and, they got 175 people and they all stood on their heads, so they had 350 feet in the air. Okay? <laughs> Uh, we've got all these cameras out here, the TV cameras or video cameras, and they're pointed at me. But I'd really like to turn them around and point them at you for a minute. And we do a little video here, and it'll be one that we can put on the web and spread around the world, okay? And let people know that people in Wisconsin care about this and are starting to take part. You people held up three fingers. You could remember what you were supposed to say. <laughs> and you all held up five and zero over here, okay? So if we can turn these cameras around, maybe we'll just try this for a minute. Three, five, zero. Three, five, zero. at this website. We're going to be doing one campaign, one of the sort of mini campaigns that we're doing this fall is going to involve having people around the country and around the world invite whoever is going to win our presidential election to go to the international planning session in Poland in December and reassert the idea of American leadership around these issues. And I got to tell you something else because I've been honest and frank with you all the way through. I'm not certain that even if we get a good agreement in Copenhagen, even if we do all this work in the next year, I'm not certain it's going to turn the tide. This is a very difficult problem, and the physical momentum of these forces is large. I mean, the name of the book that I wrote 20 years ago about all this was The End of Nature, okay? I'm not unbelievable glib optimist at all times. On the other hand, it has been incredibly exciting in the last year, again, without money, without big organizations, anything else, to watch people across the country and now across the world begin the process of rising up as a kind of immune system. We are in desperate trouble, but it's in those moments of desperate trouble that we find out what we're made of. But I do know that it's going to take all the work and all the effort and all the heart that everybody can pour into this in the next year or two, this global warming thing is a time test. And if we don't get it right soon, the world will know what we failed to do for hundreds of thousands of years. So thank you all very, very much.